Titans must finish this map to stay in the series. The Shock, it's three already, and they're looking for their last gut team coming from across the ocean. TZ is down already, though. They've lost the main tank, and Architect is bringing the thunder from the back. It's a rain of bullets, and the Titans can't do a thing about it. Well, with all the big announcements coming out of BlizzCon, things are picking up for Overwatch, including the, uh, well, announcement of Overwatch yeah. 2. And so who better to break it down for us, none other than my personal coach, Ron Renanthra Lee. Hey. Welcome back to the couch. Yeah, it's been a long time. I mean, you were here earlier, but, you know. I need back some to personal chat coaching. Some Overwatch. Why does he get preferential treatment here? He's usually the one with me on the couch one-on-one, -on -one, so we have like, an also, understanding. Okay, so I'll help. just, I'll I, just I be the guy in the middle, living. the guy in the chair <laughs> watching this go down. You can pay for some. Okay, <laughs> okay I gotta pay. You're just All a right. professional. Okay. All right, so what are your reactions to Overwatch 2? Um, I like it a lot. I think it's uh, a step in the right direction for a lot of things um, that people have been asking in the Overwatch community. Yeah. Um, I think the name is a slightly misleading because yeah. it, it makes it sound like a full-blown sequel. It's more but like it's, an expansion pack. This it's a glorified question. expansion, really. Is, is this a full new game, or is it just like a Destiny 2 kind of situation where they, Closer they, tweaked, to that for sure. okay, they tweaked some things and added stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you don't have to actually buy Overwatch 2 to enjoy any of the PvP elements. Oh, okay. That's going to be all pushed onto the server where both players that own Overwatch 1 and 2 can enjoy. Mm. You're really only buying Overwatch 2 for the PvP... Sorry player versus environment aspects, right. uh, like the story missions and the hero missions that they've really pushed as highly yeah, yeah, playable yeah. and that sort of thing. So it, this is more just like a, a lore extension for them to be able to, to help yeah, push yeah. a bit more of that, that backstory. So are the pros now going to be switching to this? Or are they going to be sitting still on, on Overwatch well, 1? Or <laughs> is the whole thing moved over to Overwatch 2 at this point? So because all the PvP will be shared between the two games, mm -hmm. and I think they've gone on record and said officially that um, all the players from both player bases will be meeting with each other, play the same maps, same modes, gotcha. same characters, same patch, everything. Um, it doesn't mean that now you'll have to buy Overwatch 2 to like play competitive with Overwatch 1 players or anything. Okay. They do not want to split the player base. And all the pros can or cannot buy Overwatch 2 if they want, depending yeah, on if right. they want to enjoy the PvE. So it's not going to be a separate, you know, there's Overwatch League and then Overwatch 2 League. That no, would be... No. Overwatch Just League Overwatch two? League for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, that's good. So I... I, I uh, so you can now get this for free then. So like if, if someone enough. hasn't played Overwatch before, they can jump into Overwatch 2 and play what the pros are playing, but for free now. So they haven't talked about pricing or dates or anything like that. I think Blizzard yeah. have said they're gonna go dark for a little bit, but how most of the people assume it's gonna work is you'll have Overwatch 1, it'll be polished up and look beautiful. They change the UI and all the character models and stuff, just okay. like Overwatch 2, but all the PvE stuff is locked behind a paywall. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're technically getting a revamped Overwatch for free, and if you want kind of the PvP and the PvE, you'll probably need both. Okay. Well, what about new heroes? Because as we saw in the introduction, mm -hmm. uh, Sojourn was revealed yeah, our there. First Canadian our, hero. Our Canadian hero. We so got our new Canadian map. We'll talk about that in a second. But are we going to continue to get new heroes as we await the release of Overwatch 2? In both games or just the one, too? That's the other question. So all game modes, maps, and heroes will be available for both games and be okay. released simultaneously. Okay. Yeah. So we get Sojourn. She'll be available for both Overwatch 1, PvP, and Overwatch 2's story missions, presumably. Mm -hmm. um, that means we'll be getting them probably pushed along uh, as the days and months go by mm. and eventually when Overwatch 2 hits they'll already be ready and available for us to play. And as an official Blizzard representative if anything <laughs> yeah, Ron just say, said is brains. incorrect you should really take it up with him yeah, online. Yeah, yeah. Be at my yeah. neck. I, I really represent Blizzard. <laughs> yeah. Everything I say is law. I was going to say now that, you're, now that you're done uh, promoting the game to yeah. everyone, uh, <laughs> let, let's, let's pick your brains on a bit more of uh, esportsy side. Stu, let's sure. start off with the map then. Um, yeah, it, like, okay. it, this is a new type of game mode that they're introducing yeah. with, uh, with the Toronto map push so yes it's, it's called push and it kind of works as a tug of war mode mm. um, it's similar to the control or king of the hill modes that a lot of us know about and play Those and are my enjoy favorite, yeah, yeah. Um, they're said on record they're going to be pushing it to Overwatch League as soon as possible. But how it works is basically there's one robot in the middle yeah. that the teams will fight over uh, for control. Mm -hmm. And they have these two separate pillars that both teams are trying to get the robot to shove to the end of either side to win so the game. The pillars start in the middle. Yes. And then the robot can push ones. them further. And there's a robot in the middle. Towards your spawn. Yeah. So you make uh, the first fight. It, so you know, it's two so separate much. payloads going basically, opposite directions. Exactly. Mm. That's how you should look at it. Your teams will meet in the middle at the start of the game, you'll fight, and the winning team will get the first opportunity to shove until the enemy team respawns, groups up, and goes to recontest. Got and if it. you can push two checkpoints, you win. 
And it's really a great mode for flankers. Yes, the maps yeah. are uh, really emphasizing a different kind of play style to make sure that every hero will have a place where they can shine. Well, that's interesting because, like, now you're not only attacking a payload, you're defending another payload at the same time. Yes. So, like, you may not have your whole team at one spot, you Precisely. know? So, like, certain things like bunker and that may fall apart at this point because then you also, now, as you said, you got, like, your tracers and that... Uh, your Genji's the, the, and stuff. Yeah, they can flank more. out yeah. and just solo push. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's so, interesting. Um, the Toronto map... Was was showcased on the Blizzard uh, floor for demos, and mm. we saw uh, a lot of players kind of realizing that, oh, there's like seven different flanks available to me at any given point. Mm. I can maybe make a play here, set up while my team shoves the cart. And that's something you can do on regular escort maps, but it's really emphasized in the shorter kind of uh, really fast-paced combat heavy modes yeah. where you're always going to be fighting and you don't always have to be kind of... Um, on the objective because there's so many twists and so turns. So I, I've, I've, I view this as a very positive thing. I, I don't know how the, the pro professional scene's taking it right now because like to me it's like a lot of the meta seemed to be very, it was stagnating for a bit there too. And anytime they introduce a new hero, it just, it was a new meta and everyone just did that one thing. You know, there weren't yes. a bunch of different things. People I think you got it. There's two or three things than, that are pretty meta yeah. and you just play that on every map. And that's map. it, right? Yeah. But now it feels like there's going to be so many more opportunities. More map specific strategies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's yeah. what they're kind of going for with this. So what's, what's, the, what's the attitude like amongst the pro scene? Uh, I think from all of my compatriots and everyone talking about it is they're excited. Um, control is probably one of the modes where a lot of teams do enjoy playing um, and because you can kind of get varied with all the sub maps mm -hmm. and now with another mode that's kind of similar and more focused on combat you can kind of get crazy with your tactics and stuff with certain approaches and certain comps and I'm excited to see it diversify itself in terms of meta. Well, speaking, well, not diversifying, uh, actually more like unifying uh, with the new competitive season, which starts in a couple of days. Yeah, I think two days from now. Uh, we're getting a smaller map pool for competitive play, and yeah. that's all, at all like yes. uh, skill So ratings. I'm super, super excited about this. They've announced a couple of changes for competitive play. Um, mm. I think Blizzard's heard a lot of frustrations of playing maps that are generally one-sided or kind of unfun. So two big uh, ones that people complain about all the time are Horizon Lunar Colony yeah. and Paris. I, I personally uh, don't like those maps very much, okay. but they're not part of the new ranked season coming out. They're removed, and now I think Blizzard is coming in with more of a uh, seasonal competitive map pool, so you uh, have a better idea of what to expect when you're okay. jumping in to yeah, play yeah. ranked. That makes, mm. it, that makes it better yeah. for the pro teams, too, to be able to prep, For right? sure, yes. And also, you can now play other modes and stuff in queue to wait and kind of warm up, which is also something a lot of players have been asking for. Well, you know, as somebody who plays tank and support, my queues are only like a couple of minutes. But right. <laughs> if, you, if you queue for DPS, you're sometimes yeah. waiting like 12, 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah, my, Between my eight queues and on DPS are average. like eight, yeah. Yeah, yeah kind it's of for those. pretty brutal. So uh, well, I wanted to ask about the Toronto Defiant as well because they've been changing up their roster <laughs> oh, yeah, in a big, big way. Yeah. So, well, you know, tell us what's happened there and why you think it's happening. Well, as a Toronto representative, um, <laughs> I think they're really making a push to get some Canadians on board. Yeah, um, which I like you know, to see now. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, how many sure. do we have front and center now? Uh, sure, four is Canadian. Agilities <clears throat> is Canadian. <clears throat> yep. Mangachu is Canadian. Yeah, uh, we might be seeing more join very soon. Who knows? Yeah. But they have a lot of popular faces here. Both Sure4, Mangachu, and, and Agilities are all uh, big faces for the game. They're very outspoken. They're, yeah. they're good poster boys for the mm -hmm. team. Um, and we're lucky to have all of them representing Toronto now. Uh, I think, you know, they're not going to go full on Canadian. There's probably yeah. not enough superstar well, you, you Canadians still need the to skill fill. Pool, right? Exactly. But I feel like it's that still was, meritocracy, and they've earned it. Yeah, yeah, I feel like this was kind of the, the the approach that they were going for. I mean, like, you know, at the beginning, it's like, okay, let's take all the superstar Koreans, spread them out, get the skill around the world, and what you do is you inspire regionally players to, you know, to step up, get better. I don't know, that's the way I thought it, it was looking to go, right? And then eventually, it's like, okay, now all the people in that region are like, wow, our team is so good. Toronto's great. I want to play for them. Everyone gets better. Yeah. Now, regionally, the world gets better. But that didn't happen. Toronto didn't do so Great. So we, we, the first didn't, we didn't do too hard, but it's happening, yeah. right? I think the goal from the get-go was definitely we want the best players available. We want mm. to see how likely we are to win and push as far as we can. And when the Korean approach didn't really work and yeah. probably hurt maybe sales a little bit, um, OAM is saying, you know, listen, we can make a competitive roster without Koreans now. And yeah. we can also maybe play up our Canadian side a little bit more probably help our you know profit line a tad with more marketable yeah. players selling jerseys and such mm -hmm. and i think it's a good move i mean they a lot of these players didn't have the greatest showing at the world cup unfortunately this year no it's mm -hmm. pretty rough for a team yeah very very poor but you know 
Um, that underpreparedness aside, coming into an Overwatch League season, they'll be able to show that up and, and have some extra time together and maybe mm -hmm. do just as well. Hopefully better than Defiant the first season around. So I'm just curious now, lo looking at the Overwatch League going forward with a lot of these these shuffles and stuff happening, what are the teams that you're expecting to sit near that top end? You know, if you give Ooh. us like kind of like your top four or five I mean, five it's very teams. early. Yeah, yeah, it's hard, but like just theoretically, SF Shock. who should be watching yeah, for? Yeah, I think Shock, they, they've they lost Nevix, but Nevix never really had much playtime to begin mm. with. Who's Nevix? Uh, I mean, ba well, basically. <laughs> um, but he's coming to Toronto, so you'll know him very oh, soon. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. <laughs> the guy coming us. Um, is but he Canadian? He's, no, uh, okay. he's, he's European, but great player. I mean, yeah. obviously he was on the San Francisco Shock. He's on the winning team. I just and, don't remember seeing yeah. him really get much play time. No, because they had Choi, but Choi has said, you know, he, he couldn't have uh, yeah. picked up Sigma as, as fast as he did without Nevix's help. So oh, okay. that's high praise from, you know, the, the season yeah. two winners. So we yeah. got Shock. Yeah, we got Shock. Is I that think, it? <laughs> um, I think Shock is on a pedestal right now. I think okay. there's a decent gap. Wow. But not but surprised. Titans were like neck and neck with them throughout the season, so are the Titans no longer? They're there. No, I think Did they're they definitely clean their top roster five. Or they, they stay in tight. Um, they've been pretty tight lipped, but they haven't released anybody. Right. I okay. think they're staying pretty strong. Yeah. Good. Um, they're, they're solid. They know they had a great season. They, they, ended a little poorly but yeah, yeah. they're probably saying listen we could make this happen the second time around no problem yeah well we're over it well you're gonna have to make a list of all the other teams that might be able to compete because we so have nyxl to <laughs> okay uh i'm gonna i'm gonna throw in a gimme i'm gonna say hongjo spark okay uh, the chinese teams and they were more. Turning things around more. towards the uh, end of the season i'm gonna i'm gonna be a total homer i'll say toronto reinvigorated blood i'm, I'm confident the canadians and i think uh all they right. can show up to surprise i like it yeah. cool Thanks for the insight, Ron. Four, four brain picks, one heart pick. I think it's okay. And uh, <laughs> you're going to have to give me uh, just a, even a discount on the training? Yeah, I mean, sure. Okay, awesome. a friend, friend discount. Perfect. <laughs>